They have a lot of, they've built in a lot of feedback mechanisms in this community so that there are a variety of ways that people's voices can be heard, you know. I had a little shock, <clears throat> so we'll see how this goes. There's a place for us, somewhere a place for us, peace and quiet and all. And wait for us somewhere. We all have to live together. We all have to partake together. We have to give and we have to share together. Uh, they didn't tell me, however, how difficult it can be to welcome a resident that is closed minded to everything that's, that we're trying to do here. It's very hard. We have one now, and he, he's been here for maybe a month. And all he does is watch TV in the TV room or stay in his room, and he won't talk, and he won't do anything. They agree to both give and receive emotional and um, physical support uh, to the environment. So physically, what we're looking for are people who commit to the maintenance of this building by uh, vacuuming the halls, cleaning the showers, helping out with the dishes at the end of the meal, and probably more importantly, we're asking for people to uh, commit emotionally uh, to the building. And what that means is that we expect new residents to uh, share their personalities with the people who are here, to um, do hospital visits, to um, watch TV with others, and generally, if they're feeling up on a particular day or a particular hour, that they use, utilize that energy and share that with someone else who may not be feeling um, as well as they are at that particular time. Everybody here needs, needs someone because more or less, in one way or another, they have been abandoned by their family because they have AIDS, you know. So if I have all this that I can give to them, well, I'm going to do that. Make them feel comfortable and at home as much as I can. So consequently, the staff and the residents made the transition of living here very easy for me. Uh, I really was not terribly active for the first few months that I lived here. I, I really am the type of person that would rather sit back and see what's going on to get, uh, become comfortable with the program, get to know people. And that whole process was, was relatively easy for me. Um, it's very important to have your own private space, which they obviously realize and provide for us. Uh, an area that we can call home. At first, the first week here, I didn't allow them to let me feel no kind of way. I isolated myself in, in my room, basically, until I got used to being here. You know, I had to get used to the place in order to make it my home. So I isolated myself in my room, got comfortable with my room first. And then I slowly started to come out and talk with other people. And I slowly got off into it. I, will, I would speak, and when they asked uh, certain questions, I would say it in such a cold way that, you know, they would stand far away from me and be careful with what they say. And, you know, I kept it like that for a while. And pretty much so still today. I don't let them get too close to me. Now, I want to be able to let go when someone passes away. I want to be able to let go. And that's important right now, because a lot of people is going through depression when someone leaves, and they really get sick. And I choose not to. And I hope it doesn't sound cold, you know, but I choose not to. And I've been, you know, pretty much happy and healthier this way. There have been at least 10 deaths in the house over a six month period. So in one way, it's a very emotional trauma. In another way, it's a very good learning experience.
to see that process, uh, to see this type of support that you have to help you go through that process and make it something that's less traumatic in my mind. And each individual death is unique and different. Uh, some that have died, I've barely known. Some that have died, I've known or become to know. And consequently, that type of emotional involvement uh, definitely has a profound effect on your, your emotional uh, stability sometimes. It's hard. I mean, I, the house does get a sense of uh, heaviness to it when uh, we have our little codes. Uh, there's a purple vase that goes on the, the desk in the lobby. Um, and there's, a, there's a, another vase that has uh, in memory of in the dining room. So I mean, without having to be told if you see either of these vases, you know that someone's, someone's passed. After someone dies in the house, we have what we call uh, a group meeting because we need the support of one another so that we can get along and keep going with our lives after this person has died. We all need that therapy. We need the closeness of each other, the comfort of each other to go on. So it's, it's not all fun and games. We have our bad moments, you know. But we have to keep going on because we're living in a house where it's going to happen and you have to cope with it and you don't have to do it by yourself. Um, we come up with a couple of rituals um, that help the residents uh, deal with their, um, their grief and that culminated in a balloon ceremony where balloons were released with messages from residents and staff tied to the strings of the ribbons of those balloons and let off. It was sort of a freeing, uh, we stopped the traffic on the street and be, were able to do that. That idea caught on very quickly, and many residents after that had asked for that to happen, and it sort of emerged as a house tradition now where uh, even if the person doesn't ask about that uh, as part of their own uh, personal funeral plan, it's something that the house does on a regular basis um, to memorialize the people who have passed before them. It's a letting go of someone who is very uh, unique and special. And... Uh, I think the symbolism is very important to the whole process of from birth to death, that we celebrate life and we end life with a celebration. Apart from the community's rituals, there are private rituals. In fact, uh, a resident who recently passed uh, left in his will some funds for his friends to have a very elegant dinner so that they could say all the things about him that they didn't say about him at his funeral. <laughs> um, and I remember another resident whose, uh, whose room looked like an antique store. And just before he passed on, he was giving away his store, things from the shop, and uh, had left, and occasionally you'll see around the house, various things from his, his room. I think particularly these private rituals, the leaving of s something, uh, passing on something uh, that they own or memory, is very important for the community. It's not only a disassembling for the individual passing on, kind of a graceful way of letting go, but it enables the community members not only a way of remembering, but also remembering a coming together, a healing, a, a renewal, a, 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 a reintegration after the loss of its members. This is absolutely essential for this community to continue on, to renew its own spirit.